Oh my goodness, everyone. We are getting snowed in again and look at poor RJ. I'm gonna let him in right now. Well, hi, RJ. Is it snowing out there? I think it's April 5th. How crazy is this? This is how much is on the step already. Oh my. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope everyone is doing well today. For us Manitobans, we are getting slammed with our second snowstorm this week. So it hit on Sunday, we were snowed in, we got quite a lot of snow. And then um, yesterday there was a snow advisory but they lifted it last night so I thought oh good, it's going to bypass us. But no, Mother Nature had different plans. So it is snowing like crazy out there. Um, I put a little clip at the beginning of the video so you could see it. Uh, RJ wasn't impressed. He is not going out today, he said. And uh, the winds are blowing kind of south uh, east. So I'm thinking that this storm is hitting Winnipeg as well. So let's just pray for all those truckers that are out there too, because it is hitting North Dakota where Sean is and the roads have been closed and open, closed and open. So these poor guys are out there trying to make a living in this terrible weather. Yes, so before we do get into this cook with me though, I just wanna show you what he brought back last weekend for me and he surprised me with these. So uh, I suffer from neuropathy and my feet are always ice cold. I don't feel that they're cold because I don't have a lot of feeling in my feet and hands, but I guess Sean felt that I needed these and they're really nice. So he brought me back these. They're called Warmies and they're snuggable, huggable, lovable uh, little slippers and they're soothing, warm and comfortable. You put them in the microwave for 60 minutes, uh, sorry, 60 minutes, <laughs> 60 seconds, and you put them on your feet and uh, your feet come out toasty warm. So I put them on just before I go to bed now. They have a bit of weight to them. They're filled with whatever it is they use, rice or whatever. But look at them, I love them. So I was very thankful that he brought those to me. Yeah, all right, I'm just gonna throw them over here so we're not looking at them. Alrighty, so this cook with me today in my new kitchen is uh, cabbage roll soup. So I love cabbage rolls, but I don't like making them. They, uh, you know, are a lot of work. So I found this recipe, cabbage roll soup, a couple of years ago, and I've been making it and it's really delicious. So I'll, I'll show you what ingredients we're gonna use. Um, and I will link this recipe below if you want to try it out. But it, it tastes like you're eating cabbage rolls without all that fuss. So I am gonna cook it in the um, air, no, I was gonna say air fryer, sorry. I am gonna cook it in the crock pot. So I'm gonna let it simmer, you know. I'll do it for four hours because most of the stuff will already be cooked before we throw it in. So here's what you need. Let me put my glasses on. So we are going to need some, it says a pound, I'm just reading my recipe here, a pound of ground beef. I think I have a little bit more than a pound in there, but that's okay. We're gonna put the ground, I'm gonna brown this first. And then you need cabbage. Well, what I do is I buy a cabbage and I get Sean to chop it all up for me and I freeze it. I don't cook it or anything. I freeze it, but when it comes out of the freezer, it's all nice and soft and you don't have to worry about is your cabbage cooked enough because it will cook enough. So this is, it says four cups of cabbage. That's about four cups to me. I'm not measuring. You need an onion, so I just have a white onion there. You need some garlic. Uh, I tend to use this garlic a lot. Um, because of my neuropathy, I'm not good at crushing and you know breaking things down. You're going to need some beef broth. I buy this Campbell's, it's 30% less sodium. So you're gonna need four cups of that. I'm probably just gonna throw the whole thing in. Uh, you're gonna need some, it says, um, let me just check here. Cans of tomato sauce. Well, I made a 
lasagna on the weekend and this was left over from it so I'm going to put this in this was from Costco you know what's nice about this Costco stuff there's no sugar added so this was my last one so we're going to put that in and I had this uh Catelli Garden Select Six Vegetable Recipe. I bought the garlic and onion, no preservatives, low in fat and saturated free fat. We're gonna ha add this whole jar in as well. Um, then you're gonna need some rice. How much rice did it say? So it says half a, cup of, half a cup of rice. I may put a cup in just because I'm doing it in the crock pot. So I keep my rice in these um, glass jars from Dollarama. We're going to need some brown sugar. <clears throat> brown sugar, we need three tablespoons. Again, I like to store all my stuff in glass. So we're gonna need brown sugar. We need uh, one bay leaf. I will probably add a couple of bay leaves. So I just store those in mason jars. And we're gonna need some parsley. All right, so, oh, and carrots. I do not have carrots fresh carrots. I have these little guys left over, you know, little snack size ones. So I'm just going to chop all these up and we'll, we'll get some carrots in there as well. So what I'm going to do right now, you guys don't need to watch me, is I am going to brown my meat. I love using my star frit uh, deep uh, bowl or bowl. Oh my goodness, Caroline. I think the weather's getting to me, people. <laughs> this is my, uh, deep uh, star frit frying pan. I do like to use this. It's deep and it's light. I do have some frying pans that are very heavy. And uh, this is the one that I like to use and nothing splatters all over. And if you don't have one of these, start the car, get to Dollar Tree. You need to buy one of these to mince your meat. It was $1.25 at Dollarama, or sorry, Dollar Tree. It's a must. So I am gonna go brown my meat. I'm gonna cut my onion. I'm going to cut my carrots and I'll be back. Alrighty, I've got the meat browning behind me. I got half an onion cut and I haven't cried yet because I got my glasses on. Who else cries when they cut onions? I did forget to mention though, that those slippers um, have a beautiful lavender scent to them. Oh, it's so good. It releases when you put them in the uh, microwave. I'm not going to wear them walking around because I don't want to dirty them. I'll wear them, you know, warm my feet up just before I go to bed. Yes. Max is whining. RJ's over there looking out the window all sad that he can't go to play. Yesterday I caught him uh, back there playing with the horses. <laughs> they, they love him too. <laughs> yeah. Apparently one of them's pregnant. I'm going to have a... Uh, baby soon we'll see how many she has and uh the poor farmer's having a hard time selling all this cattle so i don't know what the arrangement's gonna be now that we have all this in our backyard oh here comes the tears all right so forgot to also mention i've got my new apron on this one was from um whisk it's my chickens and eggs. So I got a chicken theme happening in the kitchen. Uh, my little hand towel that I did buy at Dollarama. This was gifted to me, a set of tea towels with chickens on it. My daughter Stephanie had bought me that a couple of years back with the chickens on it. So I love it. Yes, everything is perfect for living on the farm. All right, so the onions cut, I'll be back. All right, so the ground beef is still just browning behind me. I got all the carrots cut, took a little bit longer than the onions, but I got them done because they were so small, right? If I had to use full-size carrots, would it be much easier? So as I mentioned about my daughter, Stephanie, she also started a channel around the same time I did. But uh, at the time when she started, she had Santiago, the baby, and then she got pregnant. So mom life took over. And uh, she had a beautiful baby girl last July, little Mila. So little Mila was born with some um, medical uh, problems and she goes down to sick kids a lot to be seen. And God love her, this morning she uh, had to go have an MRI done and they had to sedate her. And Stephanie sent me a picture and the little IV was in her arm and 
God love her, little thing like that, having to go through that. But we know she's in good hands at Sick Kids. And uh, Stephanie does talk about her journey on her channel. So if you guys could all go over to her channel and subscribe, tell her that Caroline sent you. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. And I know Stephanie would really appreciate that. Now she did just post a couple of videos this week showing uh, what she bought for Easter for the kids. And um, yeah, so go over, give her some love and support. You will see the difference between us. Stephanie loves her, um, her bling and her fashions and mom here is just whatever. <laughs> but anyways, send her some love from me and uh, I'm gonna go drain my meat. I buy lean ground beef, but I always drain it. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be back. So I've drained my meat. I brought my um, crock pot over and my meat's been drained. I just didn't want it dripping all over the floor, but I'm gonna read this to you because this cabbage roll soup is actually a stovetop method, but I've always made it in my crock pot. So it just says, um, this cabbage roll soup has all the same flavors as classic baked cabbage rolls, but with way less work. This unstuffed cabbage soup is hearty, filling, and the perfect choice for an easy dinner option, especially on a snow day. So um, the prep time, sorry, the prep time is 15 minutes, the cook time is 30 minutes, and the total time would be 45 minutes. Now this recipe says that it does serve six. Uh, so yeah, and you know, I'll, I'll when I post it, I'll put these um, stove top instructions, directions, instructions. I was right the first time. <laughs> and so I will put it that way, but don't be afraid to put it in your crock pot. Um, I would suggest if you're going with uh, fresh cabbage that you just cut up probably a little longer because cabbage does take a while to cook down. But like I said, when I have mine frozen like this, it's, it's already uh, wilted is the word I'm looking for. So here's my meat. It pretty much filled this large um, strainer. So I'm going to throw it in. Okay, I'll just get rid of that in the sink. I did saute my onions a little bit. So there they are. That was a full uh, big onion. So we're gonna throw that in. This is why I use this light one. I can handle it and I've got it leaning on the uh, crock pot bowl. All right, that's good enough. We got most of them in. All right, so I'm gonna keep my spoon. I'm gonna get rid of this. So it says, um, so one pound of ground beef, I probably have more. One onion finely diced, we put that in. Two teaspoons of minced garlic. So like I said, I do use this garlic. It's just as good uh, for me, less crushing to do. So what did I just say? Two teaspoons, is this a teaspoon? Yeah, no, that's a tablespoon. Okay, here we go. One teaspoon. So it said two of these, right? So we're gonna go one, and we're gonna go two. Maybe an extra one for good luck. Eat your onions and garlic, people. They will keep you from getting sick. All right, so we got that in. Next, it says, uh, Four cups of coarsely chopped green, woo, green cabbage, or green cabbage. Open this. It is wet, wet because it was in the freezer, but I just throw this whole bag in now. And as you can see, the crock pot is getting quite full already. Get in there. All right, so we have our cabbage. Oh, Onyx is here. Meow, meow. All right, so we're just gonna mix that in. My cabbage is still a little bit frozen, but that's fine. We can use some of that water from it in there too. All right, so we're getting full here. 
Uh, and then it says uh, two carrots peeled. So I just did what I had left of my babies. So they're going in. Let's see a few runaways. All right, let's go. I'll throw you in. I'm just bringing everything over towards the sink here. Let's read this some more. So we got our carrots in. Now it says four cups of beef broth. Um, I'm gonna put that in after because what I wanna do is put my canned tomato sauce in first. So we're gonna do what was left in the prego. And I'll show you why I'm doing the sauce first. Now it says um, three eight ounce cans. So, I don't know how much else is this jar is. Oh, 640 mil, it doesn't say ounces, but anyway. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna rinse this with the beef broth. Now, I spent 10 minutes trying to open this. I got it open, <laughs> but I used this nifty little tool that I got, uh, I forget where I got it, but it's very helpful. So let's throw this in next. My phone is saying low battery. All right, let me fix this over there. Okay. So what we're gonna do is open the broth. I'm going to pour a little bit in there. Put the lid on. I'm gonna give it a shake because we don't want to waste any of that goodness. I'm gonna pour that in. I'm gonna do the same here. Pour a little bit in. Give it a good shake. These are the kind of meals I like prepping during the week because um, then I put them into these glass uh, bowls and Sean and I measured them out that whatever meal I put in here, I put onto a dinner plate and it fills a dinner plate. So it's a good portion. Um, and then I put them in the freezer and he can go shopping in the freezer for food because all the good um, mom and pop truck shops, truck shops, start that again all the good mom and pop truck stops and restaurants are closing down here in Canada and in the US and the bigger places are taking over and it's all fast food well fast food isn't good for you especially if you're out on the road you know five to seven days a week um, so yeah I tried to make my own food here for him now what when I poured the broth in you can see that it's uh, everything settled. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this whole container in because it is soup. So it fills it right to the top. Thank goodness we aren't putting too much more ingredients in. All right, so that is empty. And that is empty, even though it still has a little bit, but that's okay. There it goes. All right, so let's add in the last ingredients. So we got you, we got you, we got you. Um, the broth, the tomato sauce. So uh, half a cup of uncooked rice. So I always buy that, uh, oh my goodness, is it called minute rice? But anyway, it works. I put it in and it works. So it says half a cup. I'm actually gonna put one cup just because I think my uh, measurements are a little higher than what it actually calls for. So there we go, one cup of rice going in. Um, one bay leaf, well, I'm adding a couple of bay leaves. So we will add a couple of bay leaves. Bay leaves are good for flavoring soups. So one, let's put three in. Find a couple big ones. There's three, all right. I have to remember to fish them out after. Uh, 
three tablespoons of brown sugar. I'm not sure why we put brown sugar, probably just to sweeten it up a bit. Um, so three tablespoons, let me put my rice out of the way here. Get my brown sugar out. Brown sugar keeps well in these glass jars. So we said three tablespoons. So there's one, there's two, and there is three. All right, what was the last thing? Oh, and two tablespoons of parsley. So I don't think we put the parsley in right now. So let me read this to you. Like I said, it is a stovetop recipe. So it does say, heat the olive oil in a large pot over medium high heat, add the ground beef and season with salt and pepper to taste. So I gotta add some salt and pepper. Cook, breaking up the meat with a spatula until beef is browned, approximately four to five minutes. Add the onion and garlic, cook for two to three minutes. I, I sauteed my onions separately. Add the cabbage, carrots, beef broth, tomato sauce, rice, bay leaves, and brown sugar to the pot. Season with salt and pepper to taste again. So we're gonna go get some salt and pepper. Bring to a simmer and cook for 25 minutes or until rice is tender. Remove bay leaf and discard. Sprinkle with parsley and serve. So we're gonna keep our parsley till it's cooked. Uh, so yep, that's all it says. So what we're gonna do is mix this up. We're gonna put it on, I'm gonna, it's the afternoon right now. So I'm gonna put it on for four hours. So I'm gonna have some of this for my dinner tonight and the rest I will freeze for Sean. Well, and myself. Some, some nights I go to the, I go shopping in the freezer too, if I don't feel like cooking for one. So this is looking really good. Can you guys see this? Let me see. This is gonna be some good soup. Now I may, as it's cooking, I may add some more, um, water to it because there's no water in it but look at that look at that goodness all right so that is it I mean, i'm going to cook it and i'll come back if i remember when i serve myself a bowl tonight you know what would be really nice with this some homemade bread but there's just me here tonight and i'm not gonna go crazy so yeah i'll be back to show you the finished product catches in a couple of hours to you, a couple minutes. There's a close up peek at what it looks like. And like I said, oh, we are putting it on for four hours. Catches all later when it's uh, cooked. That's a bit of cabbage. See how wilty it is? Hmm, almost forgot to add the salt and pepper, but there it is, I'll mix it in. And I also went ahead and added two cups of water. So here's the second cup going in, because like I said, this is a soup. So there we have it. See you in four hours. So this is what feeding time looks like at the zoo here. So RJ gets three cups off his puppy food and I did give him a whole boiled egg. The chihuahuas, I split this between the two of them. New York strip flavor. And uh, they got an egg split between them. And Miss Onyx just jumped up. Onyx is getting her kitten food. I always water it down with some warm water for her. And I gave her a little bit of egg too because she loves it. So are you guys ready for dinner? Are you? Are you just sitting here? Did you want your dinner? Do you want your dinner? Can you give me your paw? Oh, there's a good boy. Here you go. You're so good. There you go, RJ. Here goes Onyx. There you go, Onyx. There you go. The other two eat theirs in their cage, so we'll bring it down to There's the There's a good girl. Rosie, did you get your dinner? Max is up here chowing down on his already. Is that good? Max. Max. He's like, don't talk to me. I'm eating. Here, Miss Rosie. Rosie's so shy. There you go. That's a good girl. Eat your dinner. She's like, not right now, Mom. Rosie, can you eat your dinner? Yeah, there you go. That's a good girl.
Max is almost finished up there. Alrighty, now it is soup time. Look at that goodness in there. So I do recommend putting those uh, two cups of water into it because you want it to be a soup. Ooh, delicious. All right, so we're gonna spoon this in. These bowls, I love them. I bought these bowls at, uh, oh, there's a bay leaf. I bought these bowls at Ikea. They're soup bowls and they are perfect. This looks like it is cooked just right. Look at that, everyone. All right, I'm gonna go sit down and give it a taste test. Oh, I gotta sprinkle some parsley on it as well. So I am going to sit down and enjoy my bowl of soup. Can you guys see out the window? It is still snowing, it is crazy. Does not seem like Easter is only a few days away. So let me see, I'm hoping it's not too hot. Mm. This is a must try. If you like cabbage rolls, you will love this. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. And uh, if I don't see you before Easter, everyone have a happy and safe long weekend and enjoy your Easter with family and friends. Hello, RJ. RJ popping in to say hi. <laughs> And uh, don't forget to check out Stephanie's channel. It is called Life with the Nazarios, but I will link it down below so you can just click on it and it'll take you right there and you can enjoy her videos as well. So take care everyone and uh, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on my next video. Bye for now.